We are just minutes away from tip off. NC State, the number one seed in the Bridgeport region, getting ready to take on Kansas State. That's Elisa Kunane. She's been phenomenal all year. As we welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. It has been such a phenomenal few days so far in the tournament this year. So many upsets already. We have had eight double-digit seeds knock off their opponents. That is tied for the most through the first two rounds of NCAA tournament history. We still have three more double-digit seeds playing today. Will they get to celebrate like this? We are minutes away from finding out as you take a look at the full bracket. Sweet 16 spots still up for grab. Who will be able to grab those final ones? As we say hello to you from the studio, feeling very patriotic today. Unplanned. Unintentionally, <laughs> Drea Carter, Monica McNutt, and I'm Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you. Looking forward to this NC State matchup with Kansas State. Monica, they played already once this season. NC State won, but you want even more from the Wolfpack than what we've seen Listen, so far. My friend Wes Moore from my ACC Network days, you know that I have high expectations <laughs> for your squad, and a lot of that is catapulted by Alyssa Kunane, who is averaging 50, 40, and 80 so far this season in terms of her percentages from the field the three-point line and the and the three so this is a squad to me they looked great against Longwood 12 players score five players in double figures they shoot 50 percent an efficient number one performance but they're gonna have to battle inside Dre. yeah the battle inside I mean a Yoko Lee has been dominant for Kansas State and she's had a lot of help from Serena Sundell but what you don't want for Kansas State is a situation that Iowa was in there has to be more contributing on the offensive end and they've got to find a way to slow down NC State on defense NC well. State has made the sweet 16 in the last three tournaments but Aoka Lee and Kansas State hoping that they punch their tickets. We'll see you here at the half right now. Send it out to Sam Ravich and Kelly Graham. Like, what's up, you guys? Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Raleigh, North Carolina for our second round matchup between the nine seed Kansas State and the one seed NC State. Pack have been here before looking for their fourth straight trip to the Sweet 16. It has been two decades since K-State has been there. So how did these two get here? Kansas State struggled out of the gate in their first round matchup against Washington State. They trailed by seven at the half. But then Ayoka Lee and company came out in the second half, outscored the Cougs by 17, and Ayoka Lee set the new school record with her 20th double-double of the season. On the other side, NC State, they drew the Longwood Lancers out of the first four games. And Reina Perez was on fire, six for six in the first half. And the pack were off to the races. Five players in double figures, 11 different players scored. And Elisa Kinane needed only 20 minutes of playing time to earn the victory. So we take a look at our bracket here in the Bridgeport region. The number one seed, NC State, taking on K-State. They could face off against Notre Dame if they're able to get that upset over Oklahoma. Notre Dame, one of the three teams to beat NC State this year. As we welcome you to Portside, what an excellent crowd here in Reynolds Coliseum. Alongside Kelly Gramlich, I'm Sam Ravich. Kelly, one of these two will be heading to the Sweet 16 after today, but not without some bruises. We will have a battle in the paint today. Oh, we will. We have two of the very best in the country in Elisa Kunane and Aoka Lee in this matchup down low. Elisa Kunane has been so skilled around the basket. She has a great mid-range. She can shoot the three. She's been one of the best players in the ACC all season long. And then Aoka Lee, she had a 60-burger, 61 points in January versus Oklahoma. She can score around the rim as well. She's so tough and strong inside. So we are in for a clinic in the post this afternoon, Sam Ravich. Certainly are. These two met up earlier this year, so there is some familiarity there. NC State won the first matchup in the WNIT preseason matchup, 90 to 69. Serena Sundell and Aoka Lee scored 40 of the team's 69 points. So here we go, tipping it off, Elisa Kinane and Aoka Lee, and it's Yoki winning the tip for K State. Serena Sundell for three and cashes it in. An early start 
to the All Big 12 freshman team honors. We take a look at the starting lineups presented by Capital One today. It is experience versus youth. A couple of graduate players and Reina Perez, one of them, answers on the other end. Off to a hot start here in Reynolds. Just a couple haymakers on both sides of the floor. And Serena Sundell, she struggled a bit against Washington State to score. That is a great sign for the Cats that she is being aggressive early. Into a Yoka Lee, able to come up with it. Puts it up off the back iron, and Elisa Kinane brings it in. Keep an eye on how NC State chooses to guard Aoka Lee. That time they had two bodies around her. Kunane can hold her own, but they're going to bring some help. Perez, little heat check there to start us off. Bodies on the floor, and a jump ball, possession arrow. Take a look at head coach Wes Moore, ninth season at NC State. Time ACC Coach of the Year. Seventh among active coaches with those 778 wins. It was whistled a foul, and it was on Elisa Kinane, so that's something to keep an eye on. Wow, that is surprising. I thought that was just a scrum and a jump ball, but already an early foul on Kunane one minute in. That's why when we panned to Westmore, he did not look too happy. Pair of twins on this Kansas State team as well, both freshmen, the Glenn twins. And there's Ayoka Lee getting her first basket of the game, and Kansas State with a two-point lead. Help side was a step too late from Kai Crutchfield, and Ayoka Lee did a good job of getting position inside on Elisa Kunet. Ayoka averages over 22 points a game. Perez open for three. Looks like she kind of second-guessed a little bit there and turned it over. Here's Jalen Glenn with the ball. Sister Briley now. Briley on the drive. Perez guarding tough shot. Just rolls off. Perez looking to lead the break here. Jakia Brown Turner off the bounce. Emily Ebert brings in the rebound. Lots of jumpers so far for NC State. Even off a miss, K State is playing that 2 3 zone. It looks like they will stay in that zone for most of the game to try to help out Yoki Lee inside with Kunay. Nice fake for Serena Sundell. Now five points in the game. She started out a bit slow, only had five points in the first round matchup against Washington State. They needed her to be more aggressive. Here's Elisa Kunay, her first touch of the game, and Yoki Lee swats it straight down, sending a message here early. Goodness gracious, Ayoka Lee, a take no prisoners mentality. Yoki swats it back out. NC State fans wanted it over the back there, didn't get it. Wow, even this crowd reacted with a ooh, and we've got a lot of NC State fans in this building. Hands straight up, got pretty much all ball, maybe a little contact, but I think Kunane initiated that contact. And that is a message sent from Aoka Lee. What do we say, Sam? Two great post players in this game. That, if you watch anything, I mean, watch the whole game, right. but I would have one of your eyes always watching Yoki Lee and Kunane inside. Jakia Brown, Turner's three in and out. Race for the rebound, Ebert on the floor with it, looking for help, and a jump ball call. Possession arrow will stay with NC State. Sam, we know that NC State was on spring break, okay? So Saturday, this crowd felt a little more gentle. Subdued, yes. I think this crowd is a little more hostile so <laughs> far today, and I think we can thank the students for that that are in both end zones. Travel. Kayla Jones, one too many steps. Second turnover here in the first quarter for NC State. There's head coach Jeff Mitty, eight seasons at the helm for K-State. Huge part in orchestrating what has been an 11-win improvement from last year to this year. They won only nine games last year. You head to this season, now 20 wins on the season. This K-State team looked so much more comfortable early in this game. It felt like there were some nerves against Washington State. The Cougs start, or the Cats, excuse me, start three freshmen. But these three freshmen look like they feel good in their second NCAA tournament game. Yoki Lee tangled up with Elisa Kinane. That's her second foul. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. This is the last thing that NC State wanted. And K-State does a good job of going at her, knowing she has one foul. 
get it in there, let Ioka Lee go to work, and Lee is one of the best in the country at catching the ball high and keeping it high. And now Camille Hobby, number 41 for NC State in white, the junior veteran backup, is going to have to play for pretty much the entirety of this first half, Sam. Wow, that is huge. Kanane on the bench, pair of fouls, just a couple of minutes into this first quarter. NC State down nine to three, 6.30 left to go in quarter one. Kayla Jones on the free throw line, double team there. See that 2-3 zone. Hobby with the spin move in the paint. They're gonna need a big quarter and a half from her and a good start off the bench for the junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. That shows how much this NC State team has faith in Camille Hobby. She comes off the bench, she's Kunane's backup. They go right to her on the first offensive play that she's in and she has a great move to score on the 6'6", Yoki Lee. Rebecca Dallinger for three, that's no good. Kayla Jones with the board. Jones fading away from the elbow, count it for Kayla Jones, a 6'1 graduate from Janesville, North Carolina. Kayla Jones is so versatile. She can bang inside, she can play the four, rebound with the best of them, but she can also go coast to coast and score in the mid-range. Sundell in and out, that was close to falling. Out of bounds, it will be NC State basketball. There are very few players in the women's game that can play the four and be as physical as they need to be defensively, but then take the rock and go coast to coast. And then Camille Hobby says, I'm not afraid of you, Yoki Lee. What a bucket from Hobby. Coach Westmore has been really impressed with the improvement of Camille Hobby underneath. Kayla Jones, a long three. Five points for Kayla Jones in the game. Kayla Jones got hurt last year in the first round of the NCAA tournament. She missed the next two games was a big reason why NC State missed out on the Elite Eight. She is making the most of her opportunity so far in this year's tournament. 7-0 run for the pack. They are back in the lead. Foul going against Kayla Jones, though, on the drive from Sundell. Jones has to be careful. Right now, she is a, a big rebounding presence for them with Kunane on the bench with two fouls. She has to be acutely aware, which we know she is as a fifth year senior, that she cannot pick up that second foul in this first quarter. Well, Serena Sundell, an incredibly talented freshman, a huge reason as to why Yoka Lee has had so much success this year. Unanimous selection to the Big 12 All-Freshman team. Seven to 10, K-State back in the lead. Kansas State had only five points in the first quarter in their first round game on Saturday. Already got 11 today. Hobby trying to create space. Tough shot there. Here's Dallinger, top of the key. Ty Crutchfield, one of the best defenders in the entire ACC. Knocks that one out, jump ball on the floor, staying here with K-State. What a start. 11 to 10, K-State out in front of the one seed, NC State. Somebody's going to the Sweet 16. Stick around, we got a lot more left in Reynolds. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? See, Reynolds Coliseum there was the largest basketball arena in the Southeast when it opened its doors back in 1949. You had the Rolling Stones come in in 65, performed in front of 14,000 fans in front of Reynolds Coliseum. Of course, Kay Yao became the first full-time women's coach in the college ranks in North Carolina. Her legacy she leaves behind, similar with Jim Valvano. And then Debbie Antonelli played under coach Kay Yao. Hall of Famer now, good friend of ours. Three U.S. presidents have visited Reynolds, including Barack Obama back in September of 2011. Derek Wittenberg in the stands today. NC State guard on that 83 national title team under coach Valvano. 
You see him and you think survive and <laughs> advance. And that's what NC State and Kansas State are both trying to do. Camille Hobby now with four points. Hobby into the game because Alicia Kinane picked up two early fouls. Camille Hobby's presence in this first quarter exemplifies what makes NC State so good, and it's their depth. You lose a player like Kunane, who hasn't played since the first couple minutes with those two fouls. You bring in Camille Hobby, and you haven't missed much. Dallinger looking for baseline, kicks it out. Laura Mackey over the backboard, out of bounds. So the Wildcats, over their last six now from the floor, started out real hot. NC State has kind of turned it on a little bit, despite Elisa Kunane being on the bench. Kansas State only shoots 29% from three on the season. They were three for 14 from three against Washington State. They're going to have to make some threes this afternoon. We know that. Bobby got fouled on the way up, so she'll go to the line to shoot two. Winner of this game will advance to the Sweet 16, face the winner of number four, Oklahoma, and number five, Notre Dame. That game is coming up at 6 Eastern on ESPN2. NC State, the one seed for the second straight season. Lost in the Sweet 16 last year. And I can't wait for that Oklahoma-Notre Dame game. If you like offense, you're going to want to turn that one on. Shooters everywhere. Taylor Robertson for Oklahoma, one of the best shooters in the country. Olivia Miles, superstar freshman for Notre Dame. That game's going to be a fun one. Already had a ton of upsets this tournament so far. Could we have more? Mackey 0 for 2 from the floor since she has come into the game. NC State looking to push. Perez transition three. Raina Perez is doing what she does. She makes it Raina. Picking up right where she left off in that first round game against Longwood. Largest lead of the game for NC State. Perez had 16 against Longwood. She's got six today. Sundell turning it over. Kai Crutchfield leading the break two on two for the pack. Bounce pass to Hobby. Double teamed in there, lost it. And Mackey picks it up. That's a great decision and a great play that would work against almost anyone but Aoka Lee. Her mobility at six foot six is so impressive. She got down the floor and was able to get there just in time to guard Hobby, who's also running the floor well. It, it's unbelievable to see her in person. There are not many six foot six people, men or women, that can run the floor like she can. Sundell trapped in the corner, lost it, and turned it over. Third turnover for the Wildcats here in the first quarter. Reina Perez was so good in the first round. She has been locked in. Kayla Jones sees that Jalen Glenn leaves Perez for a split second and finds her. And you know that's a knockdown from Perez. And that's Kayla Jones playing a true point yeah. forward. 13-2 run, three threes in the first quarter. Perez was looking to make it four, and Riley Glenn got pushed. As she came down with a rebound, foul goes against Jakia Brown-Turner. That's her first. That is a good call. You have to let an airborne player land. And Jakia Brown-Turner did not let her land as much as the NC State fans didn't like that one. That's a good call. Wildcats over the last six from the floor into Yoki. No good. Had a point blank shot. Was disrupted by Camille Hobby, though. Kansas State still in that 2 3 zone despite a couple made threes from the Wolfpack. Jakia Brown Turner, nice hesitation. Fouled on the floor. against Ayoka Lee, her first foul. I believe they called her for extending her hands in the contact on the floor before Jakia Brown-Turner went up. If she had just stayed back, kept her hands straight up, she's just so hard to shoot the ball over. There's no need to even put your hands on the dribbler. And she knows that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything she doesn't know. 
How about Jada Boyd hustling for the rebound? And we have a whistle stoppage of play. Not sure that NC State fans love it, but the officials go into the sideline here. The only thing I can think, I, Sam, yeah, it's is be clock. perhaps it's a clock issue. Yeah, so the shot clock reset to 17. That is unfortunate because Yeah. <laughs> I believe it was Jada Boyd who was Correct. in her shooting motion and they blew the whistle. Simone Goodrich checking in for Kansas State. Sundell will check out. The shot clock skipped a few seconds is what we're hearing. They're gonna set it back at 15 here for NC State. So still NC State ball. On a 7-0 run, Hobby. Too strong. And Ayoka Lee brings in the rebound. How does Kansas State get Ayoka Lee more involved in this game? It started out, they were able to find her, but now it seems like Camille Hobby's done a pretty good job under there. I think they've done a decent job of getting her the ball, but NC State has been excellent in whichever guard is guarding the furthest K-State player in the opposite corner. She is automatically in help side, coming even further over than you might in a normal situation. And so just the presence of another white jersey in help side, even if it's a shorter player like Reina Perez, it deters the guards from throwing the ball into Lee. So I think you still have to get it to her and let Aoka Lee keep drawing fouls and go to work. But State has, State, NC State, has done a really good job of being in help side where they're supposed to be. 30 seconds to go here in what has been an exciting first quarter. Kansas State on a scoring drought of four and a half minutes, though. Wolfpack on a 7-0 run. Jada Boyd got bumped by Ayoka Lee, and Yoki Lee's got two fouls now. That is excellent work by Jada Boyd. She was posting up a smaller guard, and Ayoka Lee had to come over and help. And they're doing a great job of going at Ayoka Lee. Two fouls on Kunain early. Let's try to get two fouls on their superstar in Yoki Lee. And State, even though they have made a couple threes, I think the point of emphasis in the huddle was we have to keep going inside because with Kunain having those two fouls, the best thing we can do is to get Lee in foul trouble as well, and they've done that. So Kansas State has to bring in Taylor Louder back, the sophomore. She is 6'7", but hasn't played a ton this year. Foul goes against Jada Boyd, her first. So we talked about at the top of our show, two All-Americans battling it out. It has been a battle, but they picked up some fouls. Two fouls early for both Kanain and Ayoka Lee, and they're on the bench. And that's basketball. Sometimes, especially with these post players, foul trouble is going to happen. But if you're NC State, you're feeling a lot better now that Ayoka Lee also has two fouls. Going to be fascinating to see what these two coaches do in the second quarter and how much each of these superstars play. Also, Sam, how many teams can bring out 6'6 six, six and right. go to 6'7 on the bench? Goodness gracious. Louder back from Appleton, Wisconsin, makes both free throws. Big free throws at that. Four point deficit, three to shoot for Perez. Fading away at the buzzer, no good. So we end the first quarter, NC State with a four point lead. The Wildcats are right there though. Second quarter coming up next. It's really all my teammates. They're just helping me get these stats, and I thank them. Awesome, awesome stuff from Olivia Miles. We take a look at how Olivia Miles is achieving the impossible, brought to you by Adidas Kelly. 
the first freshman in men's or women's NCAA tournament history with a triple-double. She is going to be amazing to watch, already is. But, I mean, can you imagine with a couple more years under <laughs> her belt what she's going to be? The rest of the ACC doesn't want to imagine right. that, Sam. And Notre Dame is one of the few teams that beat NC State this year. Only three teams did. And there's a possibility of an all ACC Sweet 16. Of course, NC State needs to handle their business and Notre Dame would have to win at Oklahoma. And these are two teams very familiar with each other already. Speaking of fam familiarity, both of these teams played earlier this year as Kai Crutchfield banks one in. That was from two, foot was on the line. NC State won comfortably over Kansas State in that WNIT preseason game, 90 to 69. Back on the other end, nine points now for Serena Sundell. Kansas State did not make a field goal for the last seven plus minutes of the first quarter as Kai Crutchfield got fouled on the way up for three by Sundell. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Thursday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on CBS and TBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Second foul on Serena Sundell as Crutchfield cashes in on the first. So now two fouls on Sundell, two fouls on Aoka Lee. As weird as it sounds, because Aoka Lee is one of the best players in the country, Kansas State almost can't afford to put Sundell on the bench like they can with Lee. They can bide some time because of Kunane's foul trouble, but they need Sundell at that point guard spot. And she scored almost all their points at this point, nine of their 15. So five points now for Kai Crutchfield. Again, you have three true freshmen on the floor for Kansas State. The Glenn Twins, Serena Sundell. Ladder back in on the post as a sophomore, and Simone Goodrich is a junior. Playing against a very experienced NC State team. Ladder back, double team, looking for help. Finds Sundell. Shot clock violation near. Just Excellent defense off. by NC State. They are a man-to-man -man team. You are really never going to see them play zone. And they are so connected in that man-to-man. -man. Camille Hobby. Oh, what a post Ooh. move and a step through for Camille Hobby. Camille Hobby going to work. She may come off the bench, but she is playing like a starter. Her teammates absolutely love it. Elisa Kunane dapping her up. She had Lauterbach just confused. <laughs> Easy bucket for Hobby. Coming up on Degree in the studio, Drea Carter, Monica McNutt, I'm Kelsey Riggs, going to be with you. We have seen some big upsets the last three days. We will break down some of those double-digit seeds that did it, how they did it, and what to expect today. But how about what we're seeing from NC State so far? Camille Hobby has stepped up in fine fashion with Alyssa Cunane going to the bench with those two fouls. NC State looks poised to go in a little bit of a run. Listen, and you know me, I like the defensive energy, causing turnovers, hustling, scrambling around. It looks good so far. Sam and Kelly, we are enjoying it. We'll have that and so much more for you guys at the half. No, you're enjoying Reynolds. Kelsey, thank you. You guys are right. You look at the balanced scoring for this team. Camille Hobby was asked to step up with those early two fouls from Kanane, and she has. The top two scores for NC State today are not on this graphic that you're seeing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Their depth is what separates them. She is NC State's leading scorer right now. That is what we call efficiency. And when you can bring Hobby, Jada Boyd, and Diamond Johnson, who has the ball right now for NC State, who is electric offense coming off the bench. That is quite the luxury for Westmore. And still comfortable with Camille Hobby in the game. Ayoka Lee has come back in for Kansas State. She has two fouls. Six to shoot. Kai Crutchfield into Hobby. Working on Ayoka Lee. Hobby powers her way through. Just couldn't finish at the rim. Keep giving the ball to Hobby. Aoka Lee has those two fouls. They're guarding Hobby one-on-one. -on -one. There's not much help. There's no one else that can guard her. So NC State has to keep pounding it inside. Another scoring drought for K-State. They have not really been able to get the ball into Aoka Lee. 
Lee now out of the three-point line. Goodrich, baseline jumper, way too strong, and Perez back the other way. Diamond Johnson into the game. Just so many players on this NC State team that can hurt you in a variety of different ways. Jada Boyd, the mid-range. These fours and fives for NC State, Boyd, Javi, Kunain, Kayla Jones, they are showing absolutely zero fear versus Aoka Lee when they get in one-on-one -on -one situations. Part of that may be, Sam, because they played Kansas State in November. And so they have that experience of what it's like to go up against someone her size. It's a great point. Diamond Johnson takes it away from Briley Glenn. Fifth turnover of the game for the Wildcats. Johnson, pass for Diamond Johnson. The sophomore guard out of Philadelphia transferred over from Rutgers and has really found her role here, accepted her role. The ace off the bench for Westmore and a 10-0 run for NC State now. And Sundell, too many steps. Couple of turnovers for the freshman. NC State is the best three-point shooting team in the Atlantic Coast Conference at 38% on the year. Diamond Johnson is one of the many weapons that can do that. Stop, pop, bottom. ACC Sixth Player of the Year this year, Diamond Johnson. Perez gets to the free throw line. Tough shot. What a make for Reina Perez. Eight now today. She had 16 and led the team in the first round. Her mid-range is so smooth. She attacked to that elbow, and she was looking for Hobby. But Aoka Lee did not leave her enough and didn't commit to help side. So Raina Perez was able to knock that down, and Lee didn't want to leave Hobby. It's a pick-your-poison situation. That's Serena Sundell, 12 of the team's 18 points. She is keeping them in the game. This is big time from a true freshman who Coach Mitty joked just turned 18, is just able to go see an R-rated movie in here in front of 5,500 Wolfpack fans doing what she's doing. Johnson so quick off the drive. Tried to find Boyd underneath. Out of bounds, K-State basketball. So NC State has extended the lead here a little bit, 31 to 18. But NC State, Kelly, can hurt you in so many different ways. Sam, you know I love puns, and they say when it rains, it pours. <laughs> and Raina, the forecast is for some precipitation. Welcome back, Reynolds Coliseum here. Chance to go to the Sweet 16 on the line. Number one seed, NC State, with a 31-18 lead over K-State. 444 left to go in the second quarter. Now, since Elisa Kinane has left the game with those two fouls, Kelly, NC State has gone on a 28-9 run. Riddle I, me that. <laughs> a team should not be able to do that. They should not be able to do that. When your All-American picks up two early fouls, you should not be able to go in a 28-9 run. But NC State and their depth, not just the three that come off the bench, but in their starters, who can step up and carry the load and score the ball? We've seen Raina Perez, Kayla Jones, Camille Hobby, of course, off the bench. This is why this NC State team is more prepared to make a deeper run than they were last year. Camille Hobby is a year older, a year better. She is playing so much more confidently and Diamond Johnson, right. who is instant offense coming off the bench as well. Seven different players have scored for NC State in this game. Just three players have scored for Kansas State in this game, and Serena Sundell has 12 of those 18. How about the job Camille Hobby has done guarding Ayoka Lee? Good pass there, though. And NC State has decided they're going to give up a few of those. Camille Hobby is supposed to deny. She's getting up around Aoka Lee and forcing her into help side. Well, sometimes because NC State's playing their two point guards together, you're going to have a much smaller player help side, and Aoka Lee's just going to score that. But if they can limit her to 15, 16 points, she only has six right now, they'll take it. Raina Perez off to yet another good start here in this one. 10 points, four for seven from the floor. Skip pass over to Briley Glenn. Here's Emily Ebert. They're giving her room. Ebert 
Now into Yoki Lee. Fading away there. Shot was a bit short. Back the other way goes Kayla Jones and company. Diamond Johnson with the runner. Stole it right back. Knocked it over to Kayla Jones. That is what I would affectionately call uh, we're just playing basketball kind of move, right? You try to shoot that floater over Aoka Lee. Well, Diamond Johnson is about 5.5. Uh, five, five. That's going to be tough. But Aoka Lee doesn't see her. She's so quick. She hits that ball away and gets the two points back. That's just playing basketball like you're playing outside in the street. Sindel's shot, no good. Jakia Brown-Turner brings it in. 35 to 20 now, under three to play in the second quarter. Diamond Johnson, corner three, count it! Oh, man. Diamond Johnson, a bonfire off of the bench. You can see why she is the ACC sixth player of the year. Five for nine from long range for the pack here. Riley Glenn in and out. Couple of those for K-State. Another 7-0 run. Jakia Brown Turner now hands it off to Hobby. Hobby double teamed and got fouled on the floor. Diamond Johnson can knock down the three ball. Great ball movement by NC State. They pass that thing all the way around the horn and Diamond Johnson knocks it down. She misses this floater. Ioka Lee doesn't even realize she's right there. So pesky and such a smart play by Diamond Johnson to stay with it. Yeah, as a team, they average just about seven and a half threes per game. They also average 34 points in the paint. Just kind of going towards that balance conversation we were talking about. Well, and for, for NC State, it's not just the balance in terms of who's scoring. It's the balance in terms of how they score. They can score in the paint. They're 27 and 1 this season when they outscore other teams in the paint. But they could go off and hit 12 threes. You just don't know because of all the shooters they have on the floor at a given time. For to shoot, Jakia Brown Turner gets a friendly roll here inside Reynolds. Nine zero run for NC State. They lead by 20 now. No points in the last two and a half. Camille Javi and Aoka Lee are fighting inside. <laughs> you mentioned in our open this is going to be a physical game where you may come out with some bruises. Well. That's what we're seeing inside. And Yoki Lee never stops moving. She never gives up on a play. I think simply put, one of the best players in the game right now, Yoko Lee, at 20 points in the first round win. Of course, came to national and international prominence with the 61-point game earlier this year against Oklahoma. It's been a tough ride, though, when you have an NC State team that's shooting just under 60% from the floor in the game so far. Kayla Jones has nine points, five rebounds, three assists. Kansas State truly plays a four-guard lineup, but Kayla Jones is so versatile. She is effectively that second post player out there for NC State, and she's been able to have her way with whatever K-State guard is attempting to slow her down. Nice spin move for Laura Mackey. Role player for this team averages five a game. Out of Baileyville, Kansas. Did not score in the first round game. Gets her first points of the NCAA tournament. Talk a lot about the seniors on this team. Kayla Jones with the floater. Hobby fouled on the shot. Basketball is not a contact sport, but those people have never played basketball, especially inside. And this is what I mean about Yoki Lee. She never stops moving. She's very aware of that three-second call. She knows how long she can hang out, and she continues to play. There are other post players that would have just given up on that play and said, all right, I'll try to get an offensive rebound. But my team, she didn't touch that ball the whole play, but she still kept moving. 
second quarter, NC State outscoring Kansas State 26 to 11. 15 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Kansas State looking to end on a high note. Into Ayoka. Good ball movement here. Dallinger for three. Count it. Rebecca Dallinger. Able to end it on a high note. NC State, though, 43. Kansas State, 27. Unbelievable what NC State was able to do with their best player, All-American Elisa Kunane, on the bench for the vast majority of that first half. NC State looking to make their fourth straight trip to the Sweet 16. In the meantime, we'll send it over to our friends in the studio, Kelsey Riggs, Monica McNutt, and Drea Carter. Guys, take it away. Sam and Kelly, thanks so much. Welcome to Degree in the Studio. As he said, Drea Carter, Monica McNutt, I'm Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you and a great start for NC State in this game, you guys. A 16-point lead at the half. Got to give credit to Serena Sundell because she has definitely kept Kansas State in this game. But defensively, they've been able to hold them to 27 points. What have they been able to do? It's just swarming. It's a lot of activity on the defensive end when you look at what the Wolfpack have done. Alyssa Kunain goes out. That affects your game plan both offensively and defensively. And Camille Hobby was great coming in. But even before that, you watch those guards. You watch the way Alexis or Kai Crutchfield, excuse me, and Jakia Brown-Turner are moving on the perimeter. The way they box out to complete plays and the way that they hustle. There's Kunane diving on the floor. There's an urgency about getting the basketball back. This is a terrific trap in the corner. That's Kai Crutchfield that played great defense. Hobby comes over to cut off that baseline and they're off to the races. Here, again, uh, who's that? Kayla Jones doing a great job of moving on the baseline, and ultimately you don't even reach in. You use that baseline as that third defender, at his, as is taught. So textbook, Drea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, and what's really impressed me, I mean, we've talked about NC State and their depth, right? You talked about losing El Elissa Cunane and how the game plan changes. It really doesn't look like the game plan changed as far as offense goes because of Camille Hobby. Camille Hobby averages 5.3 points per game. She has had some big games. She's had 15-point games, 14-point games, but to come in in the NCAA tournament and play with this kind of confidence, that is a fake turn over the left shoulder over a Yoka Lee. Six, six. Oh, excuse me, a turnaround <laughs> jumper over a Yoka Lee. This is not easy. And then an up and under. Oh, Are you sick? That is a beautiful move. The confidence, the composure, with the pressure of, there's a difference when you're just subbing in from someone, yeah. right? There's a difference when you're just subbing in and they can come back in the game if you kind of mess up. But to have in the back of your mind, oh, the player ahead of me has two fouls, mm -hmm. that's added pressure that people at home don't think about. I used to come off the bench, and I and if I came <laughs> off the bench for Ariel and she had two fouls, I was like, oh, man, I got, I really got to get it right. So I've been really impressed with Camille Hobby and her composure. She is stepping up for sure and has been in and out of that rotation for Elisa Kunain throughout the year. So great to see her stepping up for them as it is a 16-point game right now. Kansas State trying to pull off the upset today. They've got a little work to do in the second half if they want to. We saw plenty of big-time upsets yesterday, though. How about, Monica, what we saw from Creighton as they advanced to their first and The shot by Lauren Jensen was just humongous, but the overall play, Tatum Rempau, Peyton Brodsky, the Blue Jays were executing their game plan perfectly. They were a 10 seed that took down a 2 seed, and then we take you to South Dakota and Baylor, where the same scenario played out. Uh, you can't say enough about South Dakota, the physicality, their discipline, their toughness. I mean, to limit a lottery pick, two lottery Good picks, job. Shakira Austin and it. then Melissa Smith, they had a game plan they executed. Very impressive. So we have had eight double-digit seeds already pull off the upsets and get the wins through the first two rounds of the game. That is tied for the most all-time. Y'all, we've got three double-digit seeds that are playing today. Could we see more? Will we see more history? You're going to find out in just a little while. Let's start with Villanova. They're an 11 seed taking on Michigan. That game going to be at 6 o'clock on ESPNU. Can Villanova get it done? Mm, it's uh, Drea. <laughs> oh, you want me to go? Listen, if, if they're going to get it done, the ball has to go to and through Maddie Segris, obviously, right? She is so dynamic. She finds her way scoring points. But the biggest thing is going to be stopping Nas Hillman. Yeah. You have to find a way to stop Nas Hillman for Michigan because she is a dominant force inside. Ooh, that's okay. That's a tall task. All right, this one, Kels, Belmont versus Tennessee. 
This one could be tricky because Tennessee is without Jordan Horston, and they look like a drastically different squad. But when you look inside for Belmont, Tootie Jones and Destiny Wells have been terrific, and they're on the outside. They're at a size disadvantage. If they can offensive rebound and hold the time of possession the way that we saw South Dakota do, they might be able to do something. That game's at 7 o'clock on ESPN, 8 o'clock on ESPN. You can Princeton get it done against Indiana. They're an 11 seed. Well, if they want to get it done, they're going to have to defend the three-point line. Indiana has multiple weapons from beyond the arc. And then again, you've got to have a dominant score, and that is exactly what Abby Myers is. She's creative. She needs the ball out tonight. We will see what happens next. Six o'clock is when those double digits. You nervous, Mom? Get Girl, back in action. Monica, <laughs> feeling it? Maybe we might see some more magic today. I, I mean, we could. Listen. Yeah. It's doable. It, it is doable. I think of those three, Belmont might be yeah. the one that well, I think would be closest. It's the same game plan that they had against Oregon. Yeah. Somebody's going to be celebrating like this. Will it be the higher seed, the lower seed, the double digit seed? We've got more from this halftime report after this. In the studio is presented by Degree. It won't let you down. Welcome back to Degree in the Studio. Drea, Monica, Kelsey with you in the studio. We take you to the bottom of the Bridgeport region where you see UConn getting set for a game with UCF tonight at 9 o'clock. UConn seeking their 27th straight Sweet 16 appearance. Monica, we know all about Paige Beckers, all about the talent on this team. Who's the X Factor tonight? All right, so I'm going down the roster just a tad bit, and I'm looking at Dorka Yuha. She's coming off of a double-double performance in their opening round victory over Mercer. At 6'4", her versatility is so valuable for what this squad does. You can play her with a bigger lineup, you can play her with a smaller lineup, depending on what position you want her to be at. She can put the ball on the floor a little bit, she's great on the glass, and she has the ability to knock down the three. Shooting about 32% there, not amazing, but you have to respect her, which will ultimately help stretch the floor for your big players to work inside. Yeah, I love the versatility of Dorka Juhas. Another thing to look for with UConn going against UCF, UCF is the number one team in the nation when it comes to defense, defensive efficiency rating. That's points allowed per 100 possessions. They force 20 turnovers per game, so the guards of UConn have to take care of the basketball. And this is a UCF team that is in unfamiliar territory when it comes to playing in the NCAA tournament you know they are going to be juiced up after they got their first tournament win ever against Florida. We take you to the Greensboro region now. South Carolina got the job done against Miami. Bottom of that region, North Carolina and Arizona playing tonight. Drea, who are two stars you're looking forward to see? Oh, I cannot wait to see Shayna Pellington to start with for Arizona. She doesn't lead Arizona in scoring. That's Kate Reese. But Shayna Pellington had 30 points against UNLV. And look, you'll see in these clips, defenses play off of Shayna Pellington, which gives her a lot to think about. Do I want to take this shot? Do I not want to take this shot? Do I look to get to the rim? So that decision making and that confidence from Shayna Pellington, absolutely incredible to watch against UNLV. She has to show up again tonight. And then Deja Kelly for UNC. She is one of my favorite players in the league, mostly because of her ability to take contact. She is so strong, very composed, great with the basketball. She finds her teammates. She facilitates. She had 28 points against Stephen F. Austin. She needs to show up tonight as well. Those are two fine guards, Drea, I must add. Those are, those are great <laughs> guards, don't get me wrong, but I actually kind of think that in the paint, in terms of offensive rebounds in this one, someone like Alyssa, Let Alyssa Utsby, who has a little bit of versatility, can be kind of streaky. And of course, the return of Kate Reese. Will she carry over the momentum that we saw in their opening round game into this ball game? So there's also some bigs in this matchup you got to keep an eye on. But they didn't have 28 and 30, I'm just saying. Uh, you're right, there no, you, go. you're you right. got a good you, point there. You're right, you're right. talking a lot about the double digit seeds, guys. Those four or five matchups are going to be phenomenal as well. We've got a full day of action for you. LSU, they had to grind it out, got the job done. What will they be able to do against Ohio State in that UConn game coming your way at 9 o'clock? This has been Degree in the Studio. In the Studio is presented by Degree. It won't let you down. Watching the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Excellent crowd here inside Reynolds Coliseum. Students back on campus. Spring break is over. NC State, the one seed over K State, 43 27, as we get ready to start the third quarter. Let's check out our game track brought to you by Cooper Tires. Without Kanane, 
NC State was fantastic. And I think they really wondered whether or not they were going to be able to play excellent without her. Reyna Perez was on fire once again. Very little drop off without their All-American. And Elisa Cunena, 40 to 18 run. Reyna Perez, 10 points in that first half. And then Camille Hobby, who has come in and played big minutes in that five spot in Kunane's absence. Eight points for her has gone at Aoka Lee, has gotten Aoka Lee in foul trouble. Huge performance from Camille Hobby in the first half. So let's check out our game track brought to you by Cooper Tires. Uh, look, Kansas State has had a lot of trouble getting the ball to Aoka Lee and they have relied heavily on Serena Sundell. And those two players, the last time they came in here in the preseason WNIT, did have their points, but it has been the supporting cast outside of those two for K-State that have really struggled. Someone else has to step up and, and help that scoring load. And Elisa Kunane has to be careful. She has two fouls. This may be her last game in Reynolds Coliseum as she is a senior, and so I think she wants to stay on the floor. She's got to be very careful early. Emily Ebert ends up with it there. NC State shot 55% from the floor in the first half as that three will fall for Emily Ebert. They need a couple of those. They went three for 10 from beyond the arc in the first half. No way around it. Kansas State has to make threes in the second half if they want to stay in it, stay within striking distance, Part of it is because they need support around Lee. The other part is because NC State oh. shoots the three so well. How about a alley-oop pass to Kai Crutchfield? <laughs> it's very rare that you throw an alley-oop to a 5'9 guard, <laughs> but Crutchfield has the hops. And that's why they call that play for her. In the end, this was really well defended because Crutchfield got up. Yeah, she had the ups there. But so did Glenn. Jakia Brown-Turner. Out to Perez. Crutchfield now. Two to shoot. Bounce pass to Elisa Kinane at the buzzer. That is her first points of the game. Only played three and a half minutes in the first half. Well done by Crutchfield to attack, draw Yoki Lee, make her take a step towards her, and to get her senior an easy two to get her going. Both Kinane and Aoka Lee, two fouls apiece. Sundell now has 14. Crutchfield went for the steal, got one step behind Sundell, and she made them pay. Serena Sundell, the true freshman, is keeping Kansas State in this ballgame. Jakia Brown Turner, so methodic. Six foot junior out of Maryland, had 15 points in the first round game. JBT is silky smooth. She just makes it look easy. So you see Kansas State today, Serena Sundell, 14 points, rest of the team, 18. Sundell, five for eight. Here she is once again, thought about the three. Now kicks. Ebert back to Sundell, got to get a shot off. And a tough one at that. Almost banked in the three. There's Yogi Lee on the offensive rebound. That is K-State's first offensive rebound of the game. Jakia Brown-Turner back the other way. The step through. She's got seven now. The problem when you dig yourself a hole against NC State is that they're not going to stop scoring. It's so difficult to get consistent stops, to get three stops in a row. And that is definitely going to be a foul on Aoka Lee. That's her third personal foul. We talked about the physicality inside. Kunane and Lee battling it out. Pushing on each other, Yoki Lee leaned in a bit, lowered her shoulder at the last second, and Elisa Kunane sold it a little bit. Yeah, but I was gonna say. Hey, that's what you have to do, both those players. Kunane was tired of sitting on the bench. <laughs> yeah, Kunane, this NC State team, a lot of seniors, it's a senior-led team. Kunane hasn't been direct by saying this will be her last game inside Reynolds Coliseum, but she basically yes, has. We she can has read said the tea it leaves. without saying it. She has not talked about coming back for a COVID year. She has played four excellent years here at NC State, and it looks like she's going to be moving on.
to the WNBA draft. These two great post players going at it. It's that know, final Kelly. push. I don't know, Kelly. That's a little exaggeration. Did you not see her lean in and I shove her? Know. She shoved her with her hands, Sam. <laughs> Look, you gotta, you gotta sell it. There's no doubt about it. But she extended the arm with the I, shove. I hear you. And you can't do that when you have two fouls. You just have to hold back. Kayla Jones now in double figures with 11. Starting to open up now. 51-34. Sundell's three is short. This is also going to be Kayla Jones's last game in Reynolds Coliseum, and she is putting together quite a performance. Has scored in the mid-range, hit that three in the first quarter, has scored at the rim. How about 11, five, and three so far for the fifth-year senior? We also have Raina Perez, Kai Crutchfield, an experienced group, graduate players who came back with a purpose, certainly bowing out of the NCAA tournament early last year left a bad taste in a lot of these players' mouths. And they're back for vengeance. Kayla Jones back-to-back -back baskets, 13 points now for her. And it's not very often in life, Sam, you get a second chance. No, Without that COVID year, Crutchfield and Jones, their careers would be done. They wouldn't have had the opportunity. And Perez to come back and Kayla Jones was very open with us, and she's aware of that. She's aware of the opportunity they get. She's so grateful to have that extra year, and you can see it, especially in this game so far. Riley Glenn, her three is off the mark. Neither of the Glenn twins have scored yet in this game. Jakia Brown-Turner for three. Offensive rebound for Kai Crutchfield. Kicks it back out, Perez. Oh, the Hezzy for Perez! That's too pretty, Kelly. Reina Perez just playing with him right now. Crossover, pull it back, go right back to the spot. She has K-State on skates. And a timeout for head coach Jeff Mitty. And the sea of red comes alive inside Reynolds Coliseum. How great was this, Kelly? You know, Sam, sometimes when it's raining, it can get slippery. Uh, <laughs> it got slippery there for Serena Sundell. All right, 4.52 left to go in the third quarter. Kelly, what were your first impressions of this excellent weekend in the women's NCAA tournament? Well, we heard our amazing studio crew, Drea, Monica, and Kelsey, talking about the upsets. Eight double-digit seats have won so far. One of those was Creighton. They knocked off Iowa in front of 14,000. Yes, that's correct, 14,000 Iowa fans. And we already have two double-digit seeds in the Sweet 16, Creighton and South Dakota. If we get another, that would be an all-time record in the women's tournament. We have never seen three double-digit seeds advance to the Sweet 16. Aoka Lee's shot is blocked. Kai Crutchfield back the other way. Pass to Diamond Johnson. Acrobatic shot in midair. Couldn't get it to go. So there are a couple more double-digit seeds playing today, Kelly. Who, who would be your pick? if there was to be one more to get that upset as Sundell hits what is her third three of the game. Sundell has been great, but in terms of the double-digit seeds, Belmont and okay. Tennessee, I think Belmont has a chance. Tennessee still not playing their best ball. They've had some injuries, but of course that game is in Knoxville, so that's going to be difficult. And then what about Princeton yeah. and Indiana? Princeton is a very confident team. They know who they are. They know what they want to do. I know you called a few Princeton games this year, sure and, and you think they definitely have the, the ability to pull off another upset. Uh, Caleb Baruby, UConn graduate and played on their national title team in 95, has done a great job at Princeton. Abby Myers is an excellent yes. player, and by the way, they hold, hold teams to about 50 points a game, but they're playing a team that can hit a ton of threes, so that'll be a, uh, something to keep an eye on there. Diamond Johnson, corner three. Wow. They just keep on hitting six threes in the game as Diamond Johnson now has nine points. And she's a perfect three for three. I know we don't want to look too far ahead, Sam, but Diamond Johnson, the sixth player of the year in the ACC this year, keep an eye on her next year. Maybe get some preseason player of the year votes. Who knows? 
Another great point guard, Dana Evans from Louisville, went from sixth player of the year to a two-time ACC player of the year. I feel like Diamond Johnson could take a similar route. Canaan thought about the three. Johnson also did as well. Floater there as Ayoka Lee brings in the rebound. That's her fifth. Ayoka Lee's got 10 points, five boards, 20 double doubles on the year, which broke her own single season record. It's always nice when you can break your own records. Right. Ball knocked out. They step aside, NC State breaking this thing open a little bit, two and a half left to go. It has been an exciting weekend here in Raleigh. NC State and Elisa Kane looking to make their fourth consecutive Sweet 16. We are in the Bridgeport region here as we take a look at our bracket. Number one seed, NC State. Taking care of Kansas State right now. Could be a matchup against Notre Dame, a team that beat NC State earlier this year. Keep an eye on that 11-3 Princeton matchup. And then, of course, UConn down there. There's been some kerfuffle about being UConn being in the Bridgeport region. How about this? ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips is in town. Take a look at, at, at kind of his schedule. Last weekend was at Notre Dame's men's basketball first four win, then went to Milwaukee for Friday's Virginia Tech men's basketball game. Fort Worth Saturday, Greenville for Duke and Miami's wins, and now he's here. That's well, dedication. First of all, I know he enjoyed Greenville, South Carolina, because it is a great town. I'm sure he had fun. And Duke and Miami both won from the ACC. He is here taking an NC State, got that NC State tie on, and he has attended a home game for every men's and women's basketball team this year in the ACC. He was there for every game of the ACC women's tournament and the ACC men's tournament. So he has seen a lot of hoops over the last couple of months. My question, Sam, is what tie does he wear if we see NC State Notre Dame that's in the Sweet question. 16? Yeah. I don't know if he has anything that's red and gold. I, I don't know how many ties they make in that <laughs> probably, variation. Probably not too many. Maybe go no tie on that one, yeah. perhaps. It is 58-37, Jada Boyd in on the post, follows it up, gets the foul and the basket. Jada Boyd with four points. Jada Boyd out here padding those stats, getting another rebound, misses the first, gonna add a rebound to her stat line, and then goes right back up with it. Didn't even have to bring that ball down. Sam goes right back up with it. That is the fourth foul on Ayoka Lee. The Wolfpack have done a great job of attacking her on almost every play. It's an excellent balance of shooting threes because they are six of 11. But the vast majority of their shots have still been inside the arc and in the paint. And when you have a player like Ayoka Lee that is so dominant, you have to attack her. Make her think about things on the defensive end, not just the foul trouble as she heads to the bench, but also making her play both ends where she can't catch her breath. She's got to continue to guard Hobby, guard Kunain, figure out which guards are attacking the paint on defense, and have to carry her team on the offensive end. So I think NC State has just done a great job against her today. Fresh contact in for Jada Boyd. No problem at the free throw line. Completes the N1 opportunity. Minute 35 left to go here in the third quarter, where NC State has just continued to grow their lead. It's a very young but talented Kansas State team. Simone Goodrich it also just likes, and maybe this is part of the youth, just some hesitation on Kansas State's side on this end of the floor, especially. There are a few players on that Kansas State scout that NC State has just decided to not guard beyond the three-point line. And that really hurts Kansas State because of Aoka Lee inside. It makes things more crowded in the paint. Kanane on a mission there. With the reverse, under a minute to go. She is so skilled. Just one of the most skilled five players that you'll see on both the men's or women's side. Sundell, really tough shot. 
Reyna Perez hits the triple, Reyna Perez. Her third three of the afternoon. 15 points to lead the team. All smiles for Reyna Perez. This is also her last game in Reynolds Coliseum. Coliseum and it has been a memorable one for her so far. 15 points, three of six from three. I love how aggressive she's been scoring the ball at the beginning of the game, both against Longwood and today against Kansas State, looking for her own shot. Averages over three assists per game. She can certainly dish it out. Diamond Johnson off to the right. One second remaining. And out of bounds with point one to go here in the third quarter. The Wolfpack are having fun with it today, aren't they, Sam? They certainly are. Ball inbound to Kanae, and they'll take the buzzer to the corner there. And Reyna Perez, I mean, what she has done for this team in the NCAA tournament so far, 15 points today, 16 points in the first round game. She is on fire for the pack. Inside a very excited Reynolds Coliseum. There you see Derek Wittenberg, member of the 83 National Championship team, leading the band as number one seed NC State. The comfortable lead over Kansas State here as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Reyna Perez leading the team with 15 points. And to think, Kelly, just a couple of years ago, she didn't really even know anything about Westmore or NC State. Her journey is so unique. She is a sixth year player here in college who started at Northern Arizona. One of the last athletes still playing that had to sit out when she transferred to Cal State Fullerton was an absolute baller at Fullerton, Big West Player of the Year. And that's when she started to gather notice from some of the Power Five schools. The story goes that Westmore was in need of a point guard because Ace Koenig was graduating. She was the point guard on NC State's first of the of three ACC championship teams. And he heard about Reina Perez he called her, he left a voicemail, and Perez didn't answer. She listened to the voicemail, and she said she didn't know what <laughs> NC State was, where it was, and her brother said, you need to call them back. They're pretty good. Yeah. So he convinced Perez to call Westmore back. She visited and committed, and of course, the rest is history. This is her second year with the pack. She also hit the game winner in last year's ACC title game, but quite the unique journey for Reyna Perez to Raleigh. No question about it. And this, these experienced players are having great games in what could be and what are their last games inside Reynolds Coliseum as the and one falls for Kayla Jones. That play is exactly how you beat a zone. You hit the high post or the mid post and you have your four player cut to the rim. That's how you do it. 16 for Jones. She's seven for eight from the floor. NC State shooting 57% from the field as a team. And Sam, you mentioned to me at halftime how much will we see Kunane just because you yeah. want to rest her? She did tweak that ankle in the ACC championship game, even though it seems fine now. You're up big. We haven't seen much of Elisa Kunane in the second half. She had foul trouble in the first half. Four points, two rebounds for her. Still just has those two fouls, but she's enjoying it right now from the bench. And I'm not sure how much more we will see of Reyna Perez either with this game almost out of reach for Kansas State. To Camille Hobby. Ayoko Lee's got four fouls. Hobby fading away. Diamond Johnson on the follow in a fresh 20. We got a couple of really good games possibly coming up later today in UConn. We got Tennessee as well. What are you looking forward to watching later this evening? So many great games. We are the first one. We're the opening act. And you've got Tennessee and Belmont. Belmont is a team that could pull an upset. UConn and UCF, old American rivals. UCF has a great defense. Can they score enough to keep up with the Huskies? We know Tennessee fans and UConn fans will be tuning in as both those teams try to get back 
to the final four. Camille Hobby misses the shot there. I don't think Camille Hobby's uh, addition to this game can be underscored enough. What, what she did coming in with Elisa Kinane getting those two early fouls. Hobby has been a storyline, no doubt. Aoka Lee just doesn't quit. I don't know how she got that rebound. Got her own miss, even though she was fading out because of the layup. But I'm just so impressed with her mobility, her focus, her mindset. She has quite a few, no matter how many years she wants to take, she technically has two years left at Kansas State. They can build around her, and K-State is going to continue to be a problem in the Big 12. Jakia Brown, Turner, 10 to shoot. He talked about it. She's just so smooth. Nine points for Jakia Brown Turner. Earned all second team honors at the ACC tournament this year. And the numbers keep rising for everybody on this team. Foul goes against Hobby underneath the hoop. It's her first. Let me ask you this, Kelly. If there is one thing that does concern you or is something that NC State needs to focus on, the rest of this tournament, again, got to win this one here. But if there's one thing that concerns you about this team, if anything. <laughs> that is a tough question, Sam Ravitch, because I think when you look at what they do on the floor, it's tough to pick something out. They've been very good defensively. They've been shooting the rock well, but they haven't really been settling for too many threes. They've been sharing the ball, playing through their post. Diamond Johnson is on fire. I think the one thing that concerns me is the bigger picture. Something that the players have brushed off saying it's not a big deal, but it's the pressure. Yeah. The pressure of getting back or getting to a Final Four. This group has never made a Final Four. NC State has only made one Final Four, and that was back in 1998. They actually have never advanced to the Elite Eight except for that one year in 1998. So handling the pressure when you get to Bridgeport and you see all of those UConn fans that are going to be in Bridgeport, Connecticut, that's my biggest concern, but it's nothing on the basketball floor. As you see Reina Perez leaving the floor for her, the last time, we think, in an NC State jersey in terms of today. This will be her last game in Raleigh. Zaya James, the freshman into the game, saw her on SC Top 10 the other night. Gets the assist there, 18 points now for KJ. It's Moore on the drive. She got fouled. Jada Moore, 5'11 sophomore out of Denver, will head to the free throw line. Make sure you catch the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One on ESPN. Sweet 16 and Elite Eight are March 25th through the 28th, the final four from Minneapolis. That'll begin Friday, April 1st, games at 7 and 9.30 on ESPN. And then it all comes down to the championship game Sunday, April 3rd at 8 Eastern on ESPN as Kayla Jones also gets a standing ovation as she goes to the bench, the graduate player. It is seemingly their final time playing on this floor. Well deserved to get these curtain calls and just a shout out to these NC State fans. They have packed this place out. I love how Wolfpack Nation supports women's hoops. We thought with a four o'clock tip because yep. it's a Monday, this place might not be as full, but it is a sellout. Everyone is here. Wolfpack Nation is here. And I just want to shout out this fan base because they've done a great job supporting their team. And of course, their team reciprocates. This is a great product to watch, but these fans truly show up. Well, they average just under 5,000 fans uh, during the regular season. That's good for top 15 nationally. They love their basketball here. Diamond Johnson just continues to put the pressure on. She has not missed a three today, Kelly. Five for five with 15 points. <laughs> she has been unreal off the bench, shooting lights out. And that's an added component that they have this year that they did not have last year. Diamond Johnson is a transfer from Rutgers, came in this year and, and accepted her role coming off the bench, even though she was all Big Ten last year. But to be able to bring that type of scorer off the bench is a luxury for Westmore. Jada Boyd 
The junior from Petersburg, Virginia, also gets a standing ovation as Westmore starts to implement some of the younger players on this team. Madison Hayes into the game. Isaiah with the basket there. Isaiah James is going to be a star. I can't wait to see her in a bigger role next year. She made the Sports Center top 10 in their game versus Longwood. She is a scorer. The Wolfpack fans are going to love watching her. 81 46, 444 left to go. The number one seed, NC State, on the verge of reaching their fourth consecutive Sweet 16. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? All right, Kelly Gramblick, let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. Well, you know it's got to be the woman who's been making it, Reina. Reina Perez, she has been excellent in her final game in Reynolds Coliseum. 15 points. How about six, six rebounds, four assists for good measure, but it's been the three ball. Three for seven from beyond the arc. The smile says it all, Sam. Sure does. How many more making it Reina puns are we going to come up with the rest of the, rest of the tournament? When does our game end and when will they force me off air? <laughs> At some point, I feel like someone's just going to show up and take this microphone away from me. Yeah. Because of my rain of puns, but I will not stop. Some I feel best, like yeah, they just need than, to be used. Some are better than others. <laughs> if we're I'm getting honest. the vibe that Sam may be embarrassed to be working with me at this time, <laughs> but you know what? You're stuck with me, Sam. <laughs> and if Raina, it's really Raina's fault because she right? keeps no, making right. it Raina. I'm with you there. Eighty-one forty-eight, NC State commanding lead right now, looking to advance to the Sweet 16 for the fourth straight year, but looking for a better result this year than last. Jalen Glenn, top of the key for three. She's got five points now. Bounds will be K State basketball. All right, so we talked about at the top of our show how we had a couple of All Americans and Elisa Kinane as well as a Yoko Lee. How about these All Americans? This is going to be a good battle on the U. Nas Hillman and Maddie Segris, both of these players can score the rock. Nas Hillman is another one of those great post players. If you look at their numbers in the first round. Villanova pulled the upset of BYU. Michigan advanced pretty easily. So what's going to happen in this one? Michigan has yet to lose at home this year. And I wonder how Villanova, who's a smaller team, is going to be able to guard Nas Hillman. They're going to have to bring doubles to try to slow her down. So that's going to be a fun one with two very, very good players. That's Briley Glenn. She's got seven. Here's James for three. That's no good. But Rich on the drive. Offensive foul. It was set. Genesis Bryant, tough charge there. This is such a smart play from Genesis Bryant. She sees Goodrich has picked up her dribble and telegraphed a bit where she's going. And Genesis Bryant stood her ground. That charge doesn't feel good, people. Okay, that hurts, but Genesis Bryant took one for the team. A great play. Parts also into the game now as that shot will fall for Jada Moore. Or excuse me, that's Timmons. First basket of the game. All right, so let's say hypothetically, Kelly, as that one's stolen away, you, you see the bench come alive. Bryant in the open floor up and in for two. Let's say hypothetically that NC State and UConn do indeed match up in the Bridgeport reason. I know there's been a lot of fuss made about NC State and UConn being in the same region and that region being in Bridgeport. We'll talk a little about that, but Ayoka Lee coming out of the game now. 
She'll also get a nice ovation from the NC State faithful. Also because Lisa Kinane coming back into the game along with Kai Crutchfield. I thought maybe Westmore would put her back in because she didn't really get a curtain call right. just because of the foul trouble. But the NC State-UConn matchup, if we get it, is going to be must-watch television. How does Nelson Nadota fare against Kunane? That's going to be a great matchup. And then, of course, with Beckers. Is she able to look? She has looked like herself lately, but is she able to go out there and score 20? Because that's what UConn will need. Kai Crutchfield will most likely get the task of trying to slow down Beckers. Crutchfield, one of the best defenders in the ACC. And then who shoots it better? I think the three-point line is going to be incredibly important. If NC State shoots it like they did today, 9 of 19, from the three-point line. If they can make 10 or so, I think that would be a game changer. But slowing down Beckers is going to be huge for NC State. And then I think on the flip side, UConn being able to slow down Elisa Kunane. If we get there, Sam. If we get there. If we get there. There's a lot of ifs. And the ovation for Kai Crutchfield. all around that's a that's got to be an emotional feeling Kelly uh, I know that it has to be emotional on both sides for player coach fan what do you remember from the last time you stepped on the floor well it's interesting because these players because you're hosting right you almost get two senior nights in a weird way so yep. they had their normal senior night which is so emotional it's tough to even play basketball after that because your entire career is flashing before your eyes. But these players get a, a second one, if you will. And so I think it's a little easier with this one to stay in the moment because you really don't know that your season isn't over. I mean, obviously it's not for this NC State team. They're going to continue to play. But I just love the ovation. And I love that hug between Elisa Kunane and Coach Aaron Bath, who is the recruiting coordinator for NC State and has been with Kunane all four years, helped recruit her. Kunane talked about their relationship yesterday. It's the assistant coaches that don't necessarily get the publicity, but put in so much work every day with these student athletes. Laura Mackey fouled on the shot. What an excellent season it has been for her and this Kansas State team. Might not be the result they wanted here in the second round game, but an 11 win improvement from last year to this year. They won nine games all year last year. They have now won 20 games this season. And Jeff Mitty, certainly a congratulations are in order for him and everybody watching back home in Manhattan, Kansas. Zaya James, similar kind of move she put on SC Top 10 last night. Got fouled. And K-State will return all five starters, at yeah. least in terms of eligibility. And those three freshmen, the Glenn Twins and Serena Sundell, have learned so much playing this much as freshmen. So I can't wait to see them in their second year. And then Aoka Lee has confirmed she is returning. She loves college basketball, loves playing at Kansas State, wants to get her degree, wants to become a sports psychologist. So we know she's coming back. The, the future is very bright for this Kansas State squad. Jump ball, possession arrow stays with NC State. A minute and 12 left to go for this Wolfpack crew punch their ticket to the Sweet 16. More games to be played on our network later this afternoon and evening. More tickets punched to the Sweet 16 are in order. Do you know what my other takeaway is from this game, Sam? Longwood is good. Yes. Longwood played NC State pretty well yesterday. 
and they were fun to watch in this this little pod that we got to call as well. Five seconds left to go here in the game. Riley Glenn another three. That's off the mark. Crowd on their feet. About nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Sophie Hart back out. Genesis Bryant. Isaiah James back into Hart. And she got fouled. Count the basket. And the crowd goes crazy. The bench is losing their minds as Sophie Hart, the 6'5 freshman out of Minnesota, puts together a strong move and gets the and one. She's a part of the future for NC State. She has battled against Elisa Kunain in practice every day this year. I mean, what an education to have to go up against Elisa Kunain and Camille Hobby every day in practice. So. She's going to be a big part of the front court for NC State in years to come. Talk about a team effort. All 13 players have scored for NC State here this afternoon. Listen to this crowd as they send NC State off to their fourth consecutive Sweet 16. all around. Elisa Kinane maybe wasn't the star of the show, but they're going to count on her going down the stretch. Kelly, your overall thoughts on this game and on NC State moving forward to the Sweet 16. You shouldn't be able to beat a team like this with your best player only scoring four points. Unbelievable performance from NC State. Can't wait to see what happens in the Bridgeport region and the rest of this tournament, partner. A big, big thank you to our entire crew. NC State advancing to the Sweet 16. They will await the winner of Notre Dame and Oklahoma. Once again, our final score here, NC State 89, Kansas State 57. For our entire crew, alongside Kelly Gramlich, I'm Sam Ravitch. Again, thanks for watching. In the meantime, we'll toss it over to our friends at SportsCenter, Brian Custer and Michael Eves. God this is SportsCenter with Brian Custer and Michael Eves. Oh, I agree. Uh, you saw this game right before we came on here on SportsCenter. 9 seed Kansas State taking on the 1 seed NC State. Shot at the Sweet 16, and we're going to pick this thing up in the second quarter. NC State up 11. Diamond Johnson for three. She had 15. They're up 14. Second quarter again. Johnson misses. Kayla Jones doesn't. NC State went up 16 at the half. Third quarter now. And Reina Perez Ooh. driving, scoring. NC State by 21. Perez again from distance, letting it rain. She had 15 and six. Less than seven minutes left in the fourth. Jones off the bounce. Hey, NC State wins this thing by 32. They advance to their fourth straight Sweet 16. Of course, the women's championship second round. It continues tonight as soon as we're done. What's happening? Welcome into All ACC. I'm Drew Carter. The coach Muffet McGraw is here as well. We're going to explain why the coach has the Shamrock scarf on tonight. But before we get to that, we got to talk about the top seed in the Bridgeport region. The NC State Wolfpack in action today trying to punch a ticket to the Sweet 16. They've already met up with Kansas State once this year. The Wolfpack dominated those Wildcats in November. But it is March and it is different now. Number one seed NC State trying to go to the Sweet 16 for the third season in a row, dealing with K-State and Aoka Lee, who scored 61 in a game earlier this season. 6.15 left in the second quarter. NC State already leads by double figures. There's Diamond Johnson in transition 
hits the three. Three minutes left in the second now. 15-point lead. Make it 18. Johnson buries another triple. Three and a half minutes left in the third. An 18-point game. Kai Crutchfield to Johnson for her third tray. She was five of five from distance. And Reina Perez gets in on the act from downtown as well. NC State runs away, wins it 89-57, ties their largest win in tournament history. Great team win. So many people stepped up, okay? Y'all, we can do, we can beat anybody anywhere, okay? We just got to make sure we got to be the toughest team on that court, okay? Remember what happened at this point last year. It's a different team, different individuals. We're going to go play our butts off and compete every freaking possession, right? Yep. Okay, let's get it done. Here we go. NC State did lose in the Sweet 16 last year, but they look like a buzzsaw this season. You see two of their three most lopsided wins in the NCAA tournament have come over the past few days. They crush Longwood by 28 in the first round, and then they demolish K-State by 32 in round two. We heard Wes Moore, their coach, say they can beat anybody anywhere. That could be germane to the discussion when they potentially face UConn in the Elite Eight in the state of Connecticut. But for now, let's look back at these two wins for NC State. What stood out to you? The biggest thing today, we were expecting that big battle between the two All-American centers. Kunane got two of the quickest fouls I've ever seen. She played three minutes in the first half. And guess what, Drew? They didn't even need her. I think Kayla Jones stepped up. I think Perez has stepped up. Perez, to me, has been the person that has really kind of come out and played well in the, in the NCAA tournament. She's the one that's really leading them. She gets them off to a great start. They are a buzzsaw. You're absolutely right. They're playing great defense, and they can score. It's all about guard play, and Mark Perez has been phenomenal. Could they face Notre Dame in the Sweet 16? Well, the Irish have to go into Norman and knock off the four seed Sooners to make it happen. They made this look easy. There's Dara Mabry. She had 19 points, buried five triples in the first half alone. Notre Dame leads 60 to 25 at halftime. Most points the Irish have ever scored in the first half of an NCAA tournament game. They didn't let their foot off the gas at all. There's Olivia Miles, the standout freshman with the hesitation in the Euro step. How about Mabry again? That's from Buddy Heald range in Norman, Oklahoma, her seventh three of the game. Irish pouring it on there, Sonia Citron. Miles with the feed, freshman to freshman. Miles almost had another triple-double. Then in transition, she connects with Abby Prohaska, gives it to Maya Dotson for the lay-in. Notre Dame cracks the century mark for the first time in their program's NCAA tournament history. historical we talked about you guys creating your own legacy you just did the beginning of your legacy is not over okay we dance it it's not over The locker room speech after a win, something Coach Muffin McGraw knows a whole lot about. But now it is Notre Dame versus NC State in the Sweet 16. And the Irish never left a doubt about this one. 108 points, their most ever in a game in the, in a, the big dance. 44-point margin, seven trays for Mabry and Olivia Miles with 12 assists ties the Notre Dame single game record. Just a bloodbath in Norman. Shocking stuff in a tough place to play. I mean, Coach McGraw, we see that smile. What do you think of your Irish today? I, th I think everybody said it was a tough place to play, and I was just hoping they could take the crowd out of the game a little bit. They took it out from the get-go. Darren Mabry was just on fire. You know, when you bank in that three with somebody's hand in your face, you know it's going to be a good day because the three-point line is really just a decoration out there. She's looking when she gets over <laughs> half court. But this team, really, everybody stepped up. They have done so many things well. The whole team is playing great basketball. They're peaking at the right time. And I love that locker room scene because, you know what? They're not done yet. You don't want to celebrate this one. You got more to go. Yeah, they do. And it starts with NC State in the Sweet 16. You see the tail of the tape of these two ACC juggernauts. Wolfpack with a slight edge on the glass and shooting from the floor. Bench points is really where they separate themselves. And we saw that depth today with Elisa Kunane getting the early foul trouble. NC State doesn't miss a beat. But with the way Notre Dame is playing, you got to believe 
they have a chance against anyone as they go to Bridgeport and take on NC State in the Sweet 16. Coach, what do you think is going to be the key for this one? I think you hit it right at the beginning when you said about the bench depth. NC State does. They can come off the bench. They have probably three players on the bench that could start for most of the other teams in the conference. Notre Dame has been having a short bench all year long because of a lot of injuries. But this is a game, if you shoot the ball well, yes, you can be in any game, but you've got to be able to defend. I think that's where NC State has the advantage. They can really defend. That center matchup, Maya Dotson did a fabulous job on Cunane in the game that Notre Dame won earlier this year. And that was the difference in the game. So if they can manage to play some defense, that's going to be the biggest test. Can you stop Cunane? But what about the other weapons? NC State, a great three-point shooting team. Uh, but it's going to be a great game. It's unfortunate for the ACC that we're only going to have one team moving on. That's right. But what a phenomenal showing from Notre Dame today, just crushing Oklahoma, the Irish and Wolfpack. They meet up in the Sweet 16.